give us some insight into the Kyalum project, what it's about. The project exists because the Free Market Foundation, by its, in, by its nature, is interested in people having capital, people being able to do with their lives what they, what they deem best and not what the state deems best. And one of the things that we've had in this country, which is a blot on the country, and, it's, and 20 years down the line and since 94, we have still not solved it, is that people who have built houses, who live in houses and have lived there for many, many, many years, do not have title to these houses. And they are in effect, as Leon Lowe, our chief, tells us all the time, they are living under, under a form of house arrest. It does, the house doesn't belong to them, they can't sell it, they can't bequeath it to anybody. You can't get a loan on it. And so you always, in some way or other, you are beholden to the state. The other thing is, it's totally com and completely dead capital. We have all these houses that you see in all the townships, and unfortunately we define townships as areas where black people stay, black and colored people stay, who belong to the, which, that belong to the state and nobody can do anything with it. They can't leverage the, the, this, this capital. So from, the point of, from a philosophical point of view, our objective is to convert dead capital into live capital. And that's very, very important. And it's a concept that was, uh, that was pioneered by a guy by the name of De Soto, uh, and a South American economist. And it's, a, it's very, very important for third world countries like us, like ours, where, we have, where we've got these legacy issues. And then in terms of the project as it stands at the moment, give us an outline of uh, the title deeds that you've handed over and the work that's gone into the program to date? All right, it, it's a rough estimate and nobody, nobody can say that we're wrong, but nobody can say that we're right either. We estimate there's something between five and seven million people in this country who live in houses that they might have built themselves or belong to the state who do not have title to, the, to those houses and they might have lived in them for many, many, many years. We have given title deeds to passed on title deeds to people who've lived in the same house for 50 odd years and never had the privilege of saying it's mine. So this, this project is about giving title holders security, dignity and bankability. Now these are all things that white people take for granted. We've never known it to be anything else other than that. But these are the three cornerstones of the Kailam project. And the first two are the most important, security and, pr and dignity. Because the, we have numerous, everybody that you ask, where we've handed over title deeds, and you ask them, why do you want it? Because I want to know it's mine. Nobody can take it away from me. And this is a refrain that we hear from everybody. Without exception, nobody has said to us that, okay, now I can go and borrow money on it. That's far down the line. That will come afterwards. But the big thing is to know that it's mine. I can, uh, I can leave it in a will. And we encourage people to make wills. To this end, we also have a booklet with every single title deed that we hand out that tells you what your obligations are as a title holder and what your, wh what your privileges are as a title holder. And we, we try to leave as little as possible to chance, but we obviously can't do much, too much about, uh, on, that, on that level because we're, we just don't have the resources. And then obviously going forward, what is the plan of action for the project? We're very excited and, and my wife had joined me and you know, she goes with me wherever we go and we travel through, the, through this country because this thing is all sponsor driven. We go where the money is. So we've been given money to work in Paris, which is for the Nguati. We've got money to work in, uh, in the Graaf Renet the, the Municipal District, the Stellenbosch Municipal District, uh, in Grabo, where we're handing out the titles next week, in the Cape Town area, in the Umfalozi area in KZN. And it's not just handing over a title to somebody like Mrs. Mutupi, for instance, and saying, OK, you've lived in this house for so many years, uh, and uh, here's, here's your title. We are extending Kailam into enabling titling. Originally we started off is we wanted to make sure that everybody who lived in a house that was owned by the state got title. We now, because of what we've learned, we want to enable titling. And that means that when we go into an area, for instance, Graf Renet is a good example, and where 
all sorts of original documents do not exist and there aren't, there are no funds to establish these original documents. Part of what we do is establishing these original documents so that we can enable titles to be transferred out of these documents. And that is very, very exciting because it's a completely new area. In, in KZN, we're going to be dealing with the Nganyama Trust and then we'll have to work something different. It won't be a, a title that you or I understand as a title because there will be one condition that will probably remain there forever is that you can sell your property but you can only sell it to an approved buyer because it's a tribal land and we're going to have to get permission from a chief and the chief is the king of, uh, of KZN. So we will do whatever is necessary, but the one thing we will not do is we will not pass a title, we will not give anybody a title that says that you can't sell it for eight years, that you can't let it, or that the, uh, that, w that the human settlements has the right to buy it back at cost after eight years if you, sell, if, you, if you want to sell it. And that's what human settlements does. But there's another very important thing about what this project is. Is, and why, why is the free market involved in it? Is because the free market is there to preserve our freedoms. The other is to extend the freedoms that we think we should have. The, the third one is that we don't, that we are not in competition with human settlements. Because the people that we deal with fall through the cracks. They are the, those people that, we, that, can't, that can't be helped by the state because there's no machinery for them. And the last thing, and the most important thing, is that the state can't do everything. And it's this gap that we fill. And we've only touched, we've only scratched a little bit at it. But there's so much work to do. And we're looking forward to doing it.